Hey everyone, I got a couple requests for a shop tour, so I thought I'd show you around. This is my shop. It's a 22 by 40 foot structure. Uh, it's a detached garage in my backyard. And thankfully the previous owners of this house uh, who built this shop got permits for it and it even has 100 amp electrical service. So the previous owner was a car enthusiast and used this shop mostly for car work. I've never actually parked a car in here, but I have plenty of my own tools. And I thought I'd just give you the kind of the quick, the quick tour and show you what kind of tools I use. This first rack has mostly electronic projects that have come and gone. Um, I've also got a fair bit of wire on the bottom. For my previous business, I built MRI compatible electronics or electromechanical devices and went through a fair bit of wire. I eventually got to buying it in thousand foot spools and I'm pretty sure I bought more than one and a half miles of wire, but um, I don't think I broke two miles. Most of the wire is shielded multi-conductor. This stuff is actually a, uh, a low capacitance wire, which turned out not to be what I wanted. It was a, um, it's a very fat wire that just has a lot of insulation to get the capacitance down. So I, I ended up using that for maybe one or two projects, but most of the useful wire is just uh, standard 10 conductor uh, shielded stuff. I picked up this nice high voltage probe from a very generous benefactor. That's been handy. I've got the super capacitors there still waiting for a project. I also really like these colored bins. Uh, they're stackable and it makes it really easy to put all the stuff in one bin and then take it over to the bench. So if you keep all you know, tilt switches or whatever in one bin, uh, then you can take it over to the bench and start working on it. Someone gave me that uh, Tesla coil, which I've removed the tube from. It's a tube-based Tesla coil. And um, it, it worked pretty well. It made maybe three or four inch sparks. Um, but honestly, the components might end up being slightly more useful than the finished Tesla coil. So I've taken it apart and plan to use the components in other projects. Here's my main electronics area. Uh, you can see the colored bins there on the bottom for, for holding stuff. And that's pretty much all the wire I like to use. I like to use Kynar wire wrap wire for really fine work. And then I've got stranded and solid core for, for larger things. And that's pretty much my entire components selection at the top there. I find for most projects I end up having to order components anyway. So trying to stock everything is kind of a pain because it's just too expensive and takes up too much space. And with overnight shipping, it's really easy to put together a project order and just have everything you need. Uh, as far as test equipment goes, I've got a uh, milliohm meter on the bottom there, which occasionally comes in handy. That's an AC current, uh, AC current milliohm meter, so you can even measure battery internal resistance with that. My main oscilloscope is this LaCroix 9350 AM, and I really like this oscilloscope. I, the front panel response is really quick, much, much better than entry-level modern tech and LaCroix scopes. Uh, you can twist the knob and it almost feels like an analog scope. And it also has, uh, for the time, really good memory. I think it has 16 megabytes of memory or something, which <laughs> for the time was pretty good. I also have an analog scope, uh, Tektronix 2246, which uh, is also handy. As you can tell, I really value front panel response. and most modern entry-level scopes and even like mid-range scopes are pretty lousy in that respect. Long boot times, poor panel response, very annoying to use machines. And so they'll boast all these complicated features, but the main thing is it's just annoying to use because the response is so bad. Um, I've got a WaveTech signal generator there. Most of the work I do is not high frequency, and so that signal generator is, is plenty fine. It goes up to 10 megahertz or something like that. I should also add that that frequency generator goes down to quite a very low frequency. I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I think it has a millihertz range on it. So it's, it's good for very low frequency stuff as well. Um, a Hako 936 iron, definitely a nice piece of equipment. I use Hakos at work too. I think they're great. Uh, this cheap power supply here also has been pretty good. It's true the five, amp, uh, the five volt fixed uh, supply broke on it and I had to go in there and fix a cold solder joint. Uh, but I really like those scopes because it has two adjustable 
outputs and they can be put in parallel or series so it'll do 10 amps at 30 volts or 5 amps at 60 volts which is a pretty pretty generous range you can do quite a lot with here's my stock of screws and hardware for the MRI compatible business I went through a lot of plastic hardware nylon screws and things and so the, the large cabinet on the right is entirely nylon and plastic hardware okay I keep some of the lab stuff and chemicals and the cleaning supplies and things over here so I've got the lab glassware and all the chemicals I've got a small oven up here too which is used for curing glue so especially in the winter if it's 50 degrees out here F uh, if you want to cure epoxy it's really better to do it at 80 or 90 F so that, I use that oven just to warm things up very slightly Here's the largest piece of equipment in the whole shop. This is a Bridgeport R2E3 milling machine. Uh, it's a CNC milling machine built in the early 80s and it's entirely stock. It has the original controllers, drives, ball screws, everything. And I drive it with the ancient program that was originally to, uh, built to do DNC to it from DOS. On the back here there's a phase converter so it's a three-phase machine that will run on 223 phase so the shop has 220 uh, volt service but not three phase so I have to use that rotary phase converter and I've got a delta 14 inch bandsaw nothing too special there it's a nice saw here's some more stock uh, again for the MRI things I used lots of plastic so I've got a whole shelf of acrylic, a whole shelf of ABS and Delrin, uh, various acrylic tubes, and there's some aluminum and other bits of metal in there too. I also have a whole shelf of foam. Also I've got the 4x6 metal band saw. This thing's pretty, pretty junky, but again for cutting, if you've got like a half inch stainless steel shaft, there's not really too many decent ways to cut that and so this saw is really good at getting that done and you can see all the you know shaft and rod and stuff that I've got in stock here this is a 12 inch plate shear which is quite handy it's especially good for cutting PC boards you can't use a bandsaw to cut PC boards because the fiberglass will ruin your blade instantly but this shear will cut it uh, quite cleanly too got a grizzly air compressor under there that's a 220 volt model uh, fill the tank in under 60 seconds which is nice uh, that toolbox is full of lathe tooling and here's the lathe it's a grizzly 4003 G the G means gunsmith which I don't know what that really means it has a nicer spindle and a slightly better chuck than the regular 4003 lathe I've been pretty happy with this I also have a full video review on that one. I've also got a 15 inch planer. This is a, like an Enco, which is almost the same as Grizzly. Uh, DeWalt compound miter saw. Honestly, I don't use this as much as I thought I would. Uh, for cutting plastic, sometimes the plastic gums up and causes the blade to bind, and that, which is dangerous and annoying and so I you know you, it's really good for like chopping up 2x4s and 4x4s but it's not really good for precision plastic work I've also got a jointer and this is a craftsman jointer that I got for a real deal I, I paid like the um, closeout price for a used model like at the store but I ended up getting a new machine the blades on it have been dull for a long time. You can see one of the blades laying there, uh, which leads me to my next machine. This sharpener here I bought so that I could sharpen mostly planer and jointer blades, but it's also good for other kinds of tools too. Uh, an oscillating spindle sander. This is really handy. It's uh, for doing inside curves on things. This is really the best machine, and this one is, is quite nice. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, got a Ryobi belt sander. I've never used the disc sander on that, just the belt. It's good. One of these little 1x30 belt sanders. 
pretty good. It's a cheap machine, but for doing, uh, I, I take the, the backing off so that the belt is flexible, and so then you can put contours in there and smooth them off. Of course, a standard grinder. In the back there, there's a rotary uh, vibratory polishing machine, so that's full of walnut shells right now and a sandblasting cabinet. You can also put walnut shells in one of these and use that for polishing, but um, I typically just leave aluminum uh, or uh, aluminum oxide in there. I've got a hand tapping machine. This thing's pretty handy for tapping holes straight every time. I'm not very good at holding the tap steady or straight, and so this machine is quite helpful for that. There's the scanning electron microscope, and it's sitting inside this makeshift photo booth. So I've got a lot of vellum paper hanging from the ceiling, and I don't have the lights turned on right now, but there's lights behind all of that vellum to evenly illuminate the object that I'm photographing. And in the back there, there's a, a roll of butcher paper hanging off the wall for a white background. There's my coffee table. I don't think I ever did a really formal video for this on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, on the way to Maker Faire 2011, uh, the other half of the table blew off in the wind. Uh, it was in the back of a truck and it wasn't strapped down well enough. So I have half the table here, and I've always been meaning to fix it. It's been on the list of things to fix uh, since 2011, unfortunately. But if you haven't seen it, it's, it's a table full of rheoscopic fluid. So the, the fluid in there shows the motion, the turbulent motion inside the fluid. And this used to live in my living room, but like I say, it's, um, it's uh, in for repairs. I've got a chocolate tempering machine that's for sale for a friend. So if you're interested in buying this, please let me know. Uh, the only downside is you have to do about a pound or two of chocolate at a time. It just can't melt smaller quantities. It's pretty neat. It's got a temperature probe that's inside, like it's, it's held it's suspended in the chocolate to get a very accurate measurement of what the chocolate temperature is. The whole trick with tempering chocolate is that you have to control the temperature to a very fine degree. Here's a high vacuum rig that's coming along. I need a base plate and a, and a bell jar, but I've got the, the diffusion pump and a gauge here. And there's my water chiller. I also bought a shaper. I haven't done a whole lot with this, but um, my favorite bit to use is a roundover bit. So I don't even really need the, uh, the fence here. The roundover bit has a, a follow bearing, and it's really handy for smoothing off stuff. There's a standard delta table saw. Fairly cheap, but does the job. Here's my welding cart. Um, also a fairly cheap machine. It's a 200 amp TIG welder that also has a 50 amp plasma cutter feature. And I've done some videos with this. It's true the machine needed repairs, um, but I've gotten a fair number of good projects out of it. I've also got a nice oxyacetylene rig back there. Here's a couple of past projects. The trash can is actually the, an arc lamp. You can search my videos for the 1000 watt xenon arc lamp project. Uh, the modded water cooler, a CO2 tank and a vacuum pump. There's a shelf full of mostly junk there. This shelf is full of mostly parts that I used for the MRI business. So keyboards and game controllers, um, plastic springs, pneumatics, tubing, all that sort of stuff. At the top there you can see the uh, web, web controlled watering can and over here is the web controlled water vortex tube. These are two art projects that I made for San Jose City Hall and I think I have at least one or two videos talking about those. That is a um, packing peanut dispenser. Also for my MRI business, I ended up packing quite a few boxes. And um, 
This thing saves a lot of time and hassle in dealing with packing peanuts. There's more of these colored bins. These things are pretty nice. In here we've got some interesting old projects. Uh, this is mostly, on this shelf, it's uh, mostly the liquid nitrogen generator project. So you can see a tank there and some filters. And uh, the cryo cooler itself is actually way back in there. Um, obviously it's not functional at the moment. Haven't had a need for liquid nitrogen in a little while. Uh, this guy over here is a custom built power supply for the arc lamp. It's a 20 volt at 50 amp power supply. Here's a stainless steel beer fermentation vessel that I built a while back. This, um, I was mostly interested in learning stainless steel welding. And so I put together all these fittings and welded the tank together with the valves and everything. And uh, it's also quite good for, quite effective at brewing beer. The stainless steel is much better than a plastic container because it isn't permeable to oxygen or light. Okay, well, I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, or want to know what I do with some of these tools. Okay, see you next time. Bye.